Hello, welcome to Rogue Startups. I'm your host, Craig Hewitt. Here, each episode, I'm going to be sharing a nugget and a piece of wisdom that I'm learning from growing my business, Castos, from seven to eight figures and hopefully beyond. You know, business is tough. There's no easy button to push to take all the right answers and the shortcut to, to guaranteed success. But I truly believe that with the collective wisdom we have from this tech community, we really can do better and easier than we could alone. You know, I'm basing a lot of this on an amazing amount of help and feedback I've gotten from other podcasts and other founders and other YouTube channels. And this is my attempt to give back a little bit to the community to help you grow your business more sanely to a higher level, more profitably to where you're having a better experience in this journey. I sincerely hope you like the new format here. You want to connect with me, head over to Twitter. I'm at the Craig Hewitt. And for show notes for this and every episode, roguestartups.com. Let me know what you think. Hello, welcome back to Rogue Startups. I'm your host, Craig Hewitt, today with Colin Gray from Alitu and the podcast host. Uh, I've known Colin for six or eight years, uh, kind of running in the in the podcast space together. Uh, and today, Colin, Colin and I are going to talk about a lot of marketing, a lot of community ops um, stuff, and, and I think like what it means to be a big company versus uh, <laughs> a little company uh, when it comes to like marketing and brand. Colin, how's it going? Yeah, good. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, honored to be on Rogue Startups, the uh, one of the yeah. longest running shows I've listened to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's been it's been a hot minute. It's been eight years, um, almost nine years. So yeah, it's been it's been a while. We're two hundred and ninety ish episodes. That's great. Um, not many so shows. Yeah, get it's to that it's definitely time. the longest running thing I've done. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, plenty of stuff yeah. to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I think that. Uh, I think let, let's frame it. Uh, the, th the two things we're going to talk about are um, are, are both marketing related, right? Mm -hmm. One is kind of community um, and education, and and like uh, maybe like the leading part of success is what mm -hmm. it might say. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is um, you know big boy marketing versus little startup marketing, <laughs> 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 and, and like brand versus marketing tactics. Maybe is is kind of the the simpler way to put it. But um, you know, I think that. Uh, I think that the the reason we're probably looking at this is like this, the shit we'd done in the past isn't working as well as it used to, um, just very generally. I'll speak for myself. Um, <laughs> and, and so I think a lot of us are looking at like marketing in general and our businesses and saying like, okay, we probably just rode the tailwinds of, for, for the two of us in podcasting, um, mm -hmm. podcasting being cool. Uh, and it still is, but like it's reached a maturity level, which mm -hmm. I think is actually healthy, but, yeah, um, yeah. but, but that's a thing. Um, zero interest rates for a very long time to where all of our customers had a bunch of money and now they don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and, and as a result, like the economy and, and like the post COVID boom, uh, kind of equalizing. So, um, actually I think we have quite a few headwinds and I think a lot of the creator economies, maybe not headwinds, but don't have tailwinds anymore, uh, that we probably had for most of the time that you and I've been in business. Um, and, and so kind of seeing this new reality to where the good stuff we enjoyed, we can't count on it being there in the future not yeah. not to be doom and gloom but like that's probably the reality right and, and whether that's actually see i'm struggling with this as well like whether that's just an excuse like is it i i kind of mm, wonder yeah. like are there companies out there still growing just fine because they're doing the right things whereas uh, i'm just not doing the right things that's that's something mm -hmm. that's definitely on my mind as well at the moment mm. <laughs> so let, let's uh let's take a detour then and, and talk about like self-doubt right because like you're, <laughs> okay. you're a successful you're a successful founder you have a, a team you're profitable you have you know all this stuff right um i i've been thinking about this tweet i want to put out <laughs> and it's like oh yeah in every day i think i'm a total rock star and a complete loser um <laughs> Because because I will I'll, we'll close a customer or we'll launch a feature or we'll have this thing or just internally like this great interaction with the team and then you know shit happens and you're just like I cannot believe <laughs> I cannot believe that we're still struggling with this yeah. like yeah. I don't know how, how how do you how do you perceive that um, like that balance on a on a regular basis Well I'm exactly the same to start with it's like yeah ups and downs every single day um, and it's that annoyance that uh, at the end of the day, you generally remember more of the downs than the ups, don't you? It's hard to <laughs> hard to internalize yeah. the up bits and finish the day on that as opposed to mull over the down parts. So I don't know, honestly, I, d I don't, I'm not sure. Like I, I think, I think every time I feel like I've conquered it, like I feel like I managed to get over a lot of that when I was just working by myself 
And then I took mm. on a couple of employees and then suddenly that kind of amplifies it a lot because you've got, you're trying to help them with things and they're asking you questions. You're like, I don't bloody know. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Good management style. But <laughs> actually it's just genuine. I have no clue. Um, yeah. And then you start to conquer that. You're like, oh, it's actually, that is a good thing. Just ask the questions. And then suddenly you have 10 or 15 and it's a whole different level of problems. So I feel like every time I, I've got a handle on it, it changes. So <laughs> is that is that just me or is that you as well? No, I, I, I mean, I talk to my business coach. He says that I talk to other founders that are, you know, more successful than you or I, and yeah. no, no shame, but like they're no. just further along and yeah. they say the same thing. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, it's, it's interesting. I have a call with a, a founder we all know later today or tomorrow that, that they're doing 20 million a year. And his email yeah. back to me after I gave him some context of why I wanted to talk was like, yeah, I'm totally in the same boat all the time. <laughs> I was like, oh man, <laughs> there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Um, <laughs> But but so like yeah. how, how do you like really specifically like how do you deal with it like mm. meditate exercise alcohol yeah. uh, <laughs> like, <what? laughs> other of, drugs yeah. microdosing e exercise yeah. is a big one for me actually yeah like I, I I know that if I am managing to get my workouts in each week like I, I really enjoy um, sort of hit style strength strength training like the old school mm. kind of CrossFit a functional fitness type stuff so if I if I manage to get a work in a workout like that in every um two days then i'm i'm much happier because uh, i feel like i've kind of progressed in something <laughs> yeah it's like uh, so that does make a big big difference to me i'll uh, controversial opinion i have tried meditation um many times i just don't think it works for me at all i don't know how much it works for anyone um apart from people that manage to get it to like two hours a day or something but the whole yeah. 10 20 minutes a day just doesn't seem to make the slightest bit of difference to me and generally tends to just wind me up because I'm probably just doing it wrong, but I don't know. Are you into that? Uh, no, no. no. I, I no. tried for a long time. I did headspace. I did calm, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it's just not me. I think to me the the, the place for mindfulness is an exercise. You know, yes. it's, yeah. I'm running and literally like, I, I don't take, I don't wear a watch. I don't do yeah. any of this. I just go run. And yeah. like, that's the time and the space where like, I'm just with myself and yeah. that's, I think that's like what meditation should be. Um, I think so that, right. that's where I get my mindful time. Yeah. Yeah. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't write it off entirely. Cause I think the, I went through Sam Harris's, um, meditation course, can't remember what it's called. Mm. I can't remember. Anyway, he had a really good course on it and the training he gave in that actually I use quite often in that, like when I'm making my coffee in the morning, I'll kind of come to. <laughs> you know, become aware and just think, right, I'm going to concentrate yeah. on this and not think of anything else apart from listening to the water go in the cup. And that actually, those little bits, those tiny little mindful moments make a fair difference to me. They kind of, yeah. they just create a little bit of space and take my head off that um, massive issue we're dealing with today that's currently like making my mind churn and stuff like that. So that's kind of, I remember, did you ever listen to the Arnold Schwarzenegger um, interview with Tim Ferriss? No, huh? No, I, that was one of the things I took from that. Um, I got, that was a surprisingly good interview. I don't know why surprisingly, the guy's Tim amazing. Tim fantastic sure. interview. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoy his stuff, but like Arnold Schwarzenegger has like so many little, mind, little kind of takeaways. And one of them was that he spent like two months uh, meditating and now just uses those lessons and little kind of bits of daily life and this is one of the, it mm. kind of made sense to me in this sense like you just kind of use it you don't need to sit down for 20 minutes the same as everyone else does you can yep. take that kind of yep. approach and apply it whether it's exercise like yourself or whether it's literally just every time i make my coffee that's four minutes of um concentrating on one thing i don't know but mm -hmm. that, that seems to help for sure yeah. yeah no i like that i like that okay so jumping into the business a little bit I didn't give you a proper introduction. Can you kind of share what Alitu is in the podcast host and kind of what, what your role is these days in the business? Yeah, sure. Uh, it, I suppose it started with the podcast host. That was our content site. I just started writing about podcasting really um, because I was using it in my work at a university. I used to teach lecturers at a uni how to uh, teach better with tech. And one of those technologies was podcasting. So I started writing about it. Um, and just kind of fell in love with that whole medium and everything the same way um, all of us in the industry do. Uh, and the podcast host was my outlet for that. I just wrote blog posts on 
best mics or how to get a, how to be a better speaker or how to grow your audience, all that stuff. And that just grew over a fair few years. Like when was that? 2010, I started that, I think. But Alitu came along later on after the content was pretty well established because I, one of the biggest questions we always got from our audience was, how do I make editing easier? I hate editing. It takes too long. I hate like spending three hours on a podcast episode. Um, so I just started building, see what we could create that made, that could make editing easier. So Alitu started out just as a kind of podcast specific editing platform with the audio cleanup built in. And then over time we've built in call recording as well. Uh, we've got transcriptions in there. We've got kind of, it's a full all in one podcast creation platform now. Um, and we integrate with guys like you. So Castos obviously is one of our yeah. partners in there. Like people can make their podcast in Alitu, but they can publish direct to Castos via the API. So yeah, that's kind of where we are now. I, I run both of those. I'm the CEO of um, both sides uh, and I'm pretty heavily involved in the kind of product side of Alitu I, and um, still a bit in the content, but actually Matthew uh, runs most of the content side of it now. And I concentrate primarily on the, the, the product. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So we were talking before we started recording Cardinal sin of all, yes. of all podcasters is, is not recording right away, <laughs> but um, that you all are, are kind of thinking about what community means to, to Alitu and how to fit education. And I would say, success i kind of put those words in your mouth yeah. into into community like yeah. wh where are you in that and like what kind of things are you are you considering yeah we started we started our community <clears throat> um well we've we've all we've had an academy for like six or seven years and it originally had a big chat board you know like old school chat boards like yeah proper nice. bulletin board type thing we had that like five six years ago um but shut it down because it's just so hard to get people to participate and stuff like that um because they're just all on facebook or whatever else uh, but we started up again about a year and a half, two years ago on Circle. So you know, mm -hmm. come across Circle, I presume. Yeah, yeah for sure. Circle.so. Yeah. Um, and they seem to be doing really well with it because it's a place where quite a few of our audience already have an account on Circle and already are a member of a community on there. And actually, they just make it a lot easier to get in there and participate. And it's a bit more quickly interactive as opposed mm -hmm. to on a bulletin board, you always felt like, maybe I always just felt like you had to write an essay every time you contributed. Yeah. <laughs> it had yeah, to be hundreds yeah, yeah. of words. <laughs> um, so we started building that. And so right now we're at about 2,000 something people, members. Wow. 2,100, 200 huge. members. It, it feels good. It feels big. And we get quite a lot of engagement as well, actually. We get a lot of people participating, although it's still only, you know, 20, 30% of people. It's still, it's a low percentage, but for that kind of thing, it seems decent. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking a lot around our next stage of that just now. Um, is that something, have you guys ever ran a community like that or something similar? Yeah. So, I mean, I think like, like a lot of companies, we have a graveyard of failed and abandoned projects, uh, and community is, is one of them. I mean, we started a Facebook group, it's called podcast hackers. Yeah. I think it still exists, but, but we never do anything with it. And then Matt from our team started a discord server yeah, and yeah. it also still exists but but isn't active um and, and yeah i mean community is a big thing that is on our radar and we very purposefully didn't attack it because i didn't feel like we had the resources to to be successful with it yeah. um like the the people resources so so what one but, person but I think dedicated like, to it yeah, yeah yeah i mean like you it's really easy to do bad right <laughs> which we've done twice it's like stand this thing up and it's a graveyard um I think the people who do it well, like they have that organic interaction and community that that's going on, whether they're in it or not. And like, that's the, when you get it past that critical mass, it's, it's great, but I think it's just super tough. Yeah, it is. It's really hard getting that engagement going. Again, it's, it's like to try to get somebody to develop a habit around visiting your thing. Like, what can you give them? What value can you give them? And there's always that snowball. It's the network effect, isn't it? It only becomes yeah. really good once you have a bunch of people doing that. <laughs> so yeah, you somehow have yeah. to get them all doing it at once. That How was are you... something we did actually was we invested a person about half of their time of a full-time person into growing that in the early days. So I think that did make a fair difference. Um, yeah. how, curious though, how did your Discord one go? We we thought about Discord as a place because it does feel like there's a lot of people using that um, or maybe even Slack too. I don't know. How did you find that? 
Yeah, I mean, th- those are the three choices. Slack we threw out because it would just be too expensive, right? Because like yeah. free and then stuff goes away after three months or something paid, especially now with Slack has pricing updates, you know, terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, the Yeah, the other two options were Circle or Discord. Um, I, I probably... I like being in Circle more than Discord. I'm a part mm-hmm. of like uh, Lemlist, like the big email, you know, outreach company has a, a really thriving community in Circle. Um, so that 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 probably would be it. I find Discord incredibly difficult to use. Like it's just like I go in there and it's just <laughs> like, you know, it's just like overload. Um, it reminds me of the yeah. scene from Ready Player One when they're talking about like when the bad guys take over they're gonna they're gonna do all this stuff it's just like pop-ups and oh yeah everywhere. colors and shit everywhere <laughs> just through, like yeah. we won't what is it we won't induce seizures until 80 percent screen coverage i feel like that's what discord <laughs> is going for um and circle is just clean and and kind of more, more with our motif i think um yeah. yeah 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 but i mean so like i think the big question for us and and like be curious to hear how you're tackling this is like how, how does this fit into the customer journey you know is this like maybe this ties into our other question about funnels and stuff. It's like, mm, yeah. um, website visitor, uh, you know, interest somehow email opt in, maybe join the community. Is that the, is that the call to action or is it like, uh, the community comes after they become a paying customer? Cause that was a question of ours. Like, is the community just for customers or is it for anyone? Um, like, yeah. How does that fit in with yeah. the rest of the stuff you're doing? We are, the way we are thinking about it and it'd be great to get feedback on this actually is, we have our free content on the podcast host. We have um, hundred and some hundred and twenty thousand people visit that every month. So we want to give them something else that's a kind of step up from just reading a blog post. Uh, and the community, the free part of the community, the free tier is intended to be kind of what basically the most valuable version of that that we can offer that still gets some kind of way for us to kind of more better engage with them. So they sign into mm-hmm. the community and then hopefully they become engaged there and we can basically keep them up to date on things. It's a, a place we can almost um, not do marketing exactly. Well, well it, frankly, it is, it is partly around the marketing side of it. Yeah. So the free tier was kind of intended around that. And the next level up from there is we have paid courses we have the academy, so we can try and encourage them once they're in the free tier to upgrade inside Circle. Behind the paywall, we have all of our courses. We've got like um, 10, 12, 13 courses around how to do different elements of podcasting from launch right up to monetization. But we've also got weekly Q&As. We've also got challenges that we run every um, other month. We've got live events. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that's like beyond the basic blog post podcast level. So, mm. so that's the funnel on one side. It's from free content to free community tier, which is the sign up. That's the opt in. You know, if yep. we're if we're kind of following the the email metaphor, and we do that too, by the way. But anyway, this is one, uh, and then paid courses. But equally, we we cover Alitu a fair bit in there as well. So, we've one of our free courses is about Alitu, and and we're not we don't sell in there. But certainly the Alitu is the answer to some of the questions and we'll mention sure. it. Um, yeah. So that's kind of one of the other funnels in there too. Um, but yeah, that, that's the kind of, that's the kind of idea. Um, so uh, there's, there's the other element, which is being able to upgrade people to actually the success side, like you said. So I want that paid tier to be quite valuable. So we charge um, 45 a month for that just now for the courses, the access, the challenges, the Q and A. And we're going to give that, we haven't quite tied this in yet properly, but we want to give Alitu members access to that as well. So you pay less for Alitu. It's less than 45 a month for Alitu, yeah. but you get access yeah. to this paid tier. And the idea being that that's just a success tactic. It's really just to help them be better at podcasting, make their show more successful, and therefore they'll stick around and edit their show for longer with Alitu. So we kind of struggle and flip-flop a little bit in that, we kind of, it's almost in our interest to give everything away on the content side, including the courses, because it will send people towards our product, which could be the most sticky, scalable part of what we do, as long as we help people be really successful at their podcast. Yeah. So that's that's the idea, roughly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I certainly don't know the answer. But I'll yeah. just like uh, I saw on Twitter this week, uh, Jane Portman of Userlist, uh, Userlist High Team, 
um, had a had had a course uh, or part of their academy that they were charging for, and, and they started giving it away for free recently. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I said, you know, really great, awesome, like good job. Uh, I remember Ahrefs did this a few years ago. Their blogging for business course. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought for our first marketer eight hundred bucks, which at the time was like holy shit. I can't believe I'm sending eight hundred bucks <laughs> for a course. It was amazing. I mean, it transformed Denise and her contribution to the team, and really like the, the trajectory we're on. They made it free like the next month, of course. Um, <laughs> so it's free now. <laughs> And I kind of look at it like you're a bit of a hybrid, right? Because like the podcast host and Alitu literally are like separate, whatever, websites, businesses. You don't have to get into that. But like you you do have um, uh, a mixed business model also. You're not just like pure SaaS, just like we're not pure SaaS. We have the product I service too. And we've sold, we sell consulting. We sell, we've sold in the past info products and courses. Um, so, So I don't think it's wrong like categorically wrong to sell information. I think it's a matter of priority. Like what are you trying to optimize for? Is it like passive income cash flow on the podcast host side? Then I think what you're doing is right. If it's like, hey, we want to build the best possible success program and like funnel mm. for Alitude, then mm-hmm. I would give it away. Um and you can't do yeah. both those at the same time, <laughs> obviously. So it's just like which relatively, which one's more important, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm wondering if we can kind of, do, in a way, do both at the same time, as in only if you're a paid Alitu customer, you get access sure. to this yeah, pretty high level that. membership. Yeah. So that, I think that's what we're playing with. That's where we're going with it just now. But yeah, it's, it's figuring out, though, whether we can also earn a bit of a living out of um just the courses on their own because we used to set we used to have a pretty decent mrr from just our courses and our education and that coaching and stuff like that but that kind of died yeah. away because we pivoted so much of our marketing juice our marketing power whatever you want to call it towards alitu instead so that kind of a lot of that disappeared but yeah one of our competitors on the castos production side does this mm-hmm. they have a course you have access to if you're a customer um and then you could buy the course as a standalone if you're not a customer yeah yeah so that that's do kind you, of the model you're talking about do you guys offer do you have educate like when people sign up for cast as a as a hosting customer do you have much in a way of you know how to make a good podcast stuff education to help them actually with that side of it well i mean one you would know because i know you look at hrefs just like i do and i see your freaking name up there all the time and you probably <laughs> see ours <laughs> Um, but I mean, we have an enormous amount of totally publicly available content, right? Yeah, we get yeah. you know, 150,000 website visitors a month too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we have the Castos Academy, which has a ton of stuff. Uh, yeah, and so we have our YouTube do, channel, yeah. which has 180 videos on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so like, we're, we're, we're kind of like, uh, well, take a half a step back. Um. I love talking to people like you because <laughs> we're going through the same things. I hate talking to people like you because it seems like in two months when I do something related to this, it's because I'm copying off of what you did. Um, so I promise, <laughs> I, I promise I'm not, but I mean, it's crazy or, how, or we've done the same with you. <laughs> I mean, I, it's crazy how so many of the things that we all yeah. think about and talk about are, are very similar. Um, yeah. And so like, I, I think what maybe we'll just give each other grace to say like, there's a lot of great ideas out there and we shouldn't yeah. feel bad about borrowing them from, from other people. Um, That's it. And and there's only so many, I mean, ugh, as much as we can give ourselves credit for being creative marketers or whatever, there's only so many ways you can do this stuff, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but I'll just say like, I, I think we have, we have a couple of paths we could go with, um, with content and education. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think they're, and I don't know what the answer is, but I'll just give my options. Um, mm-hmm. You know, right now we kind of have it in three places, the blog, the academy, so academy.castles.com and the YouTube channel. And we don't have a community, so four maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the smart things could be take the academy and drop it inside circle, right? Which would combine two things and, and create hopefully a, a community. Um, I think there's an argument for just putting it all on YouTube and putting all of our eggs in that basket, um, which I'm inclined to think that's the smartest one because then it's totally available. There's discovery built in. There's not as much community and success. Um, and then we don't do it like you're getting at, we don't do anything (laughs) with, if you're a customer, you have access to all this content. I mean, you can, you can just go sign up and it's free. I mean, we, it is behind like a membership wall. We use paid memberships pro for the Academy. 
Um, but, but like, I mean, we link to it from the navigation in the app, uh, and it's in the success emails and onboarding and stuff, but there's not like Academy videos embedded in the product. Like we do a little bit of linking yeah. out, but, yeah. but we don't do a lot of it. So I don't, we don't have it cracked. That's for sure. Hey, it's Craig here. You know, while I love podcasting and long form conversations like this, I also really love writing and really love email newsletters. I have a newsletter called Founder Insights, where every Saturday morning I share something I'm learning in my business that I think could help you grow your business sustainably and sanely and profitably as you go along this journey. If you're interested, head over to craighewitt.me slash join to get Founder Insights, my newsletter, along with your cup of coffee this Saturday morning. See you there. Oh, that meet oh, us neither. Don't worry at all. Like we, that's the bit that I, <clears throat> that's the bit that I wonder about the most is the kind of guided aspect of it. It's like, it's the I don't know about you guys, but one of our biggest churn factors is just simply people giving up on their podcasting. There, it's not that yep. they don't like Alitu, it's not that like they don't like whatever the software, but they're just their their podcast isn't as good as they hoped it would be where they lose steam or they can't get the workflow settled where they can fit it into their week all that kind of stuff um and there's there's something about just being much more proactive about helping them with that stuff which is nothing to do with how they use our bit of software your bit of software it's about what you need to think about to make a podcast and like you've said you've got all of that stuff we've got all of that stuff but People don't go and look for it. It's the trouble, isn't it? It's like, how do yeah. you actually get it in front of their eyes at the right time and convince them that it's worthwhile reading, watching, listening to, that it's actually going to make the difference? And that's the bit that I struggle with, certainly, sometimes. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll, let me, let me and this is not my style, but um, so I did a podcast called Seeking Scale with Andy Baldacci for about, about a year and a half. We actually recorded an episode last week, so we'll oh, be... Cool. Yeah, we'll yeah. be on every once in a while, maybe quarterly <laughs> for, for a while. But um, he thinks about a lot of this stuff really different than I think you and I do. Um, and, and I think if he was here right now, he would say, you're paying attention to the wrong people. You're paying attention to people that aren't going to be successful and are going to churn no matter what. And you're trying to prevent people who don't care, don't have the the facilities and the access or, or the ability to, to be successful and you're spending energy on kind of a lost cause. Why not spend more energy on the people who really want to be your customer and just make them more successful? So are you saying that if somebody is not capable of doing it on their own, then we can't help them? It's, they're, they're a lost cause entirely. I mean, that's, yeah, generally, yeah. <laughs> that's one argument. Yeah, yeah. I get you. I, I'm yeah, not saying yeah. that's right, but I think that's what Andy yeah. would say. And yeah. and I think yeah. there's a there's a part of that that's right, right? That like, yeah. um, and, and let me, let me, I, 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 and I think that's true in the situation where uh, the podcast is like this one started out as, right? It was just me, a passion project. I started this podcast New Year's Eve, right? That's how, like, I had a one-year-old and it was just like... <laughs> Like it was just a hobby, right? Um, and so like the ones talking about your favorite TV show or your sports team or whatever, you're not going to make any money forever, right? Because monetizing mm -hmm. a podcast, if that's the only thing you have is so hard. Um, and it's a labor of love. And so it's just so easy to quit, right? So I think mm -hmm. that it, it, it could be, it could be um, customer selection that guides that more than anything, right? If you have you know, super cool startup that wants to start a podcast, like they're going to be in it because they, you know, brand and marketing and all the other shit that we might talk about, <laughs> about like <laughs> brand and marketing, like that's where a podcast is super valuable. Yeah. Um, if it's a part of other stuff that you have going on. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's that we are in this sense, thinking about the wrong type of customer. You could be right. You could be right because I've tried a few, quite a few different things over the years and how to get people to engage with it. I did a, I did a doctorate in this thing, <laughs> like, like online yeah. learning. That's <laughs> what my PhD is in is like how to get busy people to take courses. And like I managed to figure out ways to, you know, give it them a 10% better chance essentially to get through a course, which is cool, but it doesn't make the slightest yeah. bit of difference really to, um, to our revenue. Uh, so yeah. Maybe it, maybe it is about actually finding those people that do hit certain pieces of our education that show that they have engaged 
they're proactive. They're you know they, they've they've hit these first one or two milestones by themselves, which indicates that motivation that if we put a bit of fuel on that fire, maybe that's what it is. Like because I I do believe that we can make a difference. I think that our teaching can make a difference on how long a podcast runs for because I think a mm-hmm. lot of people drop out despite enthusiasm, skill, um, you know, passion, all that kind of stuff. I think some of them do drop out simply because they don't have quite the right mindset around it or, or the right workflow or um, just forget about certain types of editing or certain types of things that just take them too long. So I think there are bits of fuel we can put on that fire to help. But I think you might be right in terms of it's, it's probably a really good point around maybe you need a better indicator of which like 20% of those initial people that come in are are capable of of achieving that <laughs> yeah they need to have at least a good bit of motivation themselves yeah and i mean i, I certainly don't know so like uh, you know yeah. i say all this as as more questions than than like declarations but um yeah i i think that pod for podcasting specifically the that like there's two to me there's two big buckets that go into success. One is like creating great content and editing is a big part of that and being prepared mm-hmm. unlike I am for the show, um, <laughs> you know, and researching your guest and like coming up with interesting topic ideas and all this kind of stuff like that. That's all one part. And then I think everyone focuses their attention there. <laughs> and then the part where they do absolutely nothing is promotion, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so like, that's something that we're on our Castos production side. We're thinking a lot about right now is like, okay everyone's putting all their energy in the how do I create great content bucket and and we help you know kind of get them to the to the finish line there but then like for success if the podcast is successful <laughs> they're going to stick with it and so what can we help with around like promotion and marketing yeah. I, I don't have any answers yeah. I mean I think it's I think it's a lot of the same best practices as a lot of the stuff that everyone else is doing is website newsletter social mm-hmm. youtube you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff, but, but yeah. kind of in, uh, enabling customers to do it without having a social media marketer on their team. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're totally right. That's really smart. Actually. Yeah. If you can get people above that, even that three figure, you know, um, download per episode, get them into the hundreds, then it's just so yep. motivational to people. Like that when they just see their switch, 50, it? 60, 70, they're like, Oh, it's only like, yeah, two figures, but somehow over a hundred just hits people's imagination somehow. <laughs> yep yep and yeah. and well just like anything and growing a little bit <laughs> right like the, yeah, the flat yeah, line is yeah. just like a motivation killer yeah um yeah yeah totally <laughs> so yeah uh, it, it, it almost ties into sorry i was just gonna say it, t- it ties a little bit into an experiment we did recently which around um we went credit card free so we we've always had credit card requirement in our funnel uh so when people sign up they have to put a credit card in but they get a seven day free trial and we've always converted our free trial to paid really well. Like it was over 50% for years regularly. Um, and and then even beyond that, people stayed around. Like it's not like they forgot to cancel. Like our churn wasn't horrible. We're certainly not the best in the business, but it's not horrible by any means. But we went to credit card free with the principle that maybe we can bring more people in the door. Um, we can convert more of them. And actually it's a bit of an awareness thing. Alitu is a funny thing in that I think that People need to experience it to see kind of how much easier it is because it's quite different to the normal way you would edit. So we just want more people to try it and talk about it and all that stuff. So we did it. We hit the switch. Project took way longer than it should have. Um, Not that it should have, sorry. Way longer than we thought it would because of all sorts of unexpected little barriers and stuff Uh and checkout. And checkout's such a fragile little thing. Like you need it to be perfect because you're going to lose money otherwise. Um, So a few months later, we launch it like right okay let's see let's see how good this goes and it just went like it just our conversion just went off an absolute cliff like not just we obviously thought it would be less we knew it would be lower but we hoped that it wouldn't be you know drastically lower and that our obviously our influx our in um inbound would be much higher but our inbound only went up by it didn't even go up by two times so we went up by about like number of trials yeah exactly yeah so our number of trials went up by about 1.7-ish, so about 70% increase, which is not terrible, you know, if we can convert a fair bit of them. Mm-hmm. But our conversion dropped by uh, about five times. So it was about 20% of our previous conversion. So that amounted to something like a third or so 
of the customers at the end of the funnel. <laughs> it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. Um, so we did tried you, a couple. Did you turn it back? So we tried a couple of little experiments over a couple of weeks, but I was just sitting staring at that MRR graph, like going down, yeah. down, down. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, right, guys, we're turning this back. I'm sorry. I can't. I know, like, yeah. theoretically, you're supposed to try these things for a month, two months minimum, but I, I can't take it. My uh... yeah. <laughs> so we switched it back. Um, but it, I think it's something around that, uh, what we are talking about before, around the commitment required for certain types of of things and podcasting is one of these things that you need to make a real commitment to otherwise yeah. you never get it running it, it takes that kind of and I, th I think that credit card thing was something that helped people make an actual genuine commitment to it and then they ended up paying and they didn't cancel because they thought right oh i've paid for it even if they had forgotten to cancel they're like no but i do want to make one and i've paid for it now so i'm going to do it yeah <laughs> So there was, I think there's something in that. I think there's something around that, around that commitment, that kind of somehow getting people to just put a bit of skin in the game to get it going. And once they do, they, they love it. They figure it out. So it's, it's funny. Uh, I'm laughing. Like, I hope Rob Walling is listening to this because <laughs> <laughs> people who have followed us know we started Castos with credit card up front. And then right after we joined Tiny Seed, basically, uh, a lot of people's suggestion was like, take credit card away. That's just not the way people buy SaaS. Da, 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 da. And then three years, we did that. Ba basically, that that transition you're just talking about, we saw no change. Um, except for a fuck ton of work and development and then a bunch of yeah. work with like onboarding sequences and drip and how are we sending emails and triggers and customer acquisition and product usage and all this kind of stuff. And then... We started seeing a bunch of spam about a year ago. Yeah, um, really? And it was, oh, it was unbelievable. First, it was um, people coming in and using our Spotify integration to post like Taylor Swift and stuff to Spotify <laughs> really? uh, on a free trial. <laughs> unbelievable. And the Spotify is like, we're going to shut you down. Da, da, da. And we're like, oh, yeah, okay. So we put that behind the like paid wall, you know, so you had to be a customer to use that. Um, and then, and then people started signing up to put, to, to use our podcast website. So it's like, you know, roguestartups.castos.com as like link farms, because our domain rating is like 86 or something. It's insane. Yeah, so they're like, really? Hey, for at least two weeks, we can get a link to this site and they think it's worth it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> and so we, we did the same thing. We went back to credit card. And none of it makes any difference in the end to Has it been exactly the same to, yeah. to paying customers at the end of the month, you know, yeah. and it's just like, but, I, but I'm in the same boat. Like I want people to commit, you know, it's 19 bucks, you know, like mm -hmm. it's 19 mm -hmm. bucks. If you can't commit to 19 bucks, you're, you're just not going to be, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, and like, yeah, so not, nothing has changed. Like churn has not changed. I went up like two tenths of a percent which like yeah, yeah. i think i think it is because people forget and then we charge like if i bet if we look at our 30-day churn that that's where it is um but like new customers at the end of the day hasn't changed but the the great result is jimmy and kelly our support team have a fifth of the trial you know customers yeah, exactly. to, to mess so with yeah. and we can just like yeah think thinking about like success calls like we get 200 trials a month like ooh, like i could talk to 200 people in a month you know if they want it, like if you send an email, like, Hey, give you a 15 minute success call. 10% yeah. of them would take you up on it. That's 20 calls a month. Like it's one a day. Yeah, you could sure. totally do that. And, and like, what would that do versus, I mean, I think it's the dream. I think it's one of the many dreams that we have dispelled as myths of self-service SaaS is like, it's ultra profitable. Like, Nope. Like, cause as founders, we want to invest every last cent of revenue into growing the business. Uh, it's passive. Nope. You always have development and you always have support. Yeah. And that's what, I mean, that's the, all the costs of SaaS. I mean, we have, we pay about 15 grand in infrastructure a month, but, but aside from that, like it's all people. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, that's a bit of a rant, but like nothing's perfect. Uh, <laughs> everything takes work to do well. Yeah, I got you. No, as it actually ties into that whole topic we're talking about, about kind of um, big company marketing versus little company, because mm. it's it's the concept around, and it was somebody else brought this up to me, actually, the, the idea of when things are a bit flatter, when the economy's harder, when, when the world is a bit tougher for businesses, 
it tends to be much less um, beneficial to play around with those refinements, those optimizations, those like one, two percent better, you know, playing with the color of a button or the wording in a headline. And actually at that point, those things don't make half as much difference. And really it's big bets you need. It's something kind of much bigger, much bigger. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, we've been thinking about that a lot. Like how do we, because we're used to running experiments because we've got the same as you, like when you have that much traffic, it is quite worth like trying out different CTAs and things like that. But it's just not, it's not making the difference we need it to now. So yeah, yeah thinking about those yeah. bigger bets. Um, I mean, I'll give a, give a shout out to the, the HubSpot I think generally HubSpot podcast network, amazing. Like they have oh, yeah. a few really, yeah. really, really, really good shows. Like probably my two favorite shows these days are my first million, like uh -huh. about, about half the time I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> but about <laughs> half the time I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, but the other one is marketing against the grain. Um, oh, I don't know okay. if you listen, I'll but, listen to that. No, no. uh, Kieran Flanagan and Kip Bodner, Kieran CMO at, Hub, at Zapier now was at HubSpot and, um, and, yeah. So, it's just a really good show. I mean, they talk all about AI right now, but but before AI, they were talking a lot yeah. about like the, the exactly this is like brand and um and like marketing that you can't measure and, and like how we're exiting this yeah. like Facebook pixel tracking world where everything is super attributable and it probably started with like um the Google not specified thing you know from six yeah. years ago or whatever years ago now yeah for sure yeah pro probably started with that and then the ios 14 update or whatever and, and now like yeah i think so much of marketing is is not measurable and then it makes it hard for businesses that want to grow faster aren't ultra profitable to where you can just throw away 20 grand on this bet um to say like we're gonna do this thing i have no idea if it's gonna work Mm. And I have no idea how to measure in the medium term, even like w whether this is a good idea or not. Like that, it's terrifying. Like all those are the worst possible scenarios, and I, I don't, yeah, I don't have an answer for it. I, but I also think it's what you got to do, right? Because like doing what we've been doing is not giving the results we want. So we got to try something different. Um, yeah, but, but not knowing well, what that is is, is I mean, terrifying. Yeah, I, I feel maybe there's maybe there's two sides to that. I feel like the stuff we've been doing has. Maybe you're under undervaluing the work you've done there because obviously you've built a, a really good big business out of, I mean, big for our size, out of sure, all the yeah. content you've created, the kind of older school marketing, like just the stuff we've done ourselves. I think we've done well with it. But you do get to this point where you feel like to reach a kind of next level, whatever that might be, maybe right. that's when you need to shift to the brand marketing or something like that. But yeah, again, maybe that's just not our skill or... I don't know. Or, or like you say, it's not measurable. So I brought, I took on a growth guy um, three years ago who's much more interested in that side of things. Um, and he's done some great stuff for the company. And one of them, though, that I don't know if it's worked very well or not, because we can't measure it in this way, is the thing that brought this to mind when we were talking about what might we talk about. Um, and that was, we decided to do a kind of big thought leadership exercise that took probably man hours i wouldn't be surprised if it was something like two three months full time between three four or five people so that is a lot of money that's like pff, tens of thousands i think we spent on that tens of thousands um and we came out with some really nice output from it so it was we did a survey basically with 2000 plus podcasters analyzed a whole bunch of data we called it a census um it got some really interesting stuff out of it created what we called a, a manifesto from that around how indie podcasters can best set up a show and run a show successfully and um, loads of advice in there based on real structured solid data um, and we created all of that stuff and it was great and we ran a live event as well which actually went really nicely too and all of that felt great at the time it felt like here we're doing some big stuff this is big company market and this is brand market and here this is uh, this is the good stuff um and and people responded really nicely to it. Just about every element of it. We've got so much nice feedback. And now it's all done. <laughs> and it's like a month in the rear view Miller, the last part of it. And nothing in our growth has changed. Yeah. Nothing in our growth has changed. Um, yeah. We can't see any particular uptick from it. There's no kind of ongoing. No, I'm sure there'll be some longer term benefits. Somebody will think of us because they saw this. Five months down the line, we might get a partnership or something. Another I don't know. 
I'm not sure. Something might come from it, but yeah, that was what was on my mind, certainly. <laughs> Does yeah. that resonate at all? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it totally, totally resonates. I mean, I don't have, I don't have an answer for this one. I, I think it's just something that we all, that we all struggle with. I, I surely do is like, how do you, how do you have confidence to place these subjective bets when the outcome you may never know? And certainly you won't know for a long time. Um, and, and it's not as established as like SEO and content marketing. Cause like a hundred percent five years ago, if you start blogging and you're intentional about keywords, you're going to have traffic and some yeah. of those will turn to customers <laughs> that that still, I think applies now, even with AI. Um, but, but like the, when you go past that, like what, you know, even podcasting, right? Podcasting, YouTube, all that. Like, can can you categorically say, if I keep with this, it will be successful and we'll get customers and brand and partnerships and all that. Like, I, I think podcasting, YouTube, yes, social even, pro- probably, if you're doing it well. Um, and, and to me, that that's like a safer bet is like, instead of going from where you and I kind of started, which is blogging, to... Uh, events and surveys and like thought leadership stuff like that like one especially one-off stuff um Mm. like i would probably say i would probably go like the one next step which is like podcasting and youtube and then and then like try to get much better on social um and that's i mean that's what we're doing like we launched a new podcast a couple months ago um launching another one called creative architects soon uh and that's where we're bringing someone uh from the outside in to to run the show it's gonna be it's gonna be in seasons it's gonna be a 10 or 12 episode season and then we'll we'll probably run two of those a year um but but that's our kind of near-term bet of for like really different marketing and then all the other you know this podcast for me and audience that Stuart does and then our youtube channel yeah um yeah nice yeah that's cool yeah the the other part of it i don't know the answer yeah yeah events like sponsoring events stuff like that that's that's the other big boy thing that we don't really do yeah (laughs) we did one and it it, again it felt good the team did the team did a great job setting up the stand all that kind of stuff but no difference really (laughs) yeah that's tough it's tough yeah yeah but that sounds like yeah i know what you mean so doing more basically of what we do well figuring out how to expand out your content yeah. A bit more I mean, maybe it's like concentric circle, right? It's like you start with this one thing and then once that is maybe kind of saturated or not working as well or not giving mm-hmm. you the growth you need, then then maybe like those next those next couple of steps next to it instead of a bigger yeah. leap. I don't know. That that's just how I think about it, but I'm also kind of chicken and I don't want to take those big bets that I'm not <laughs> that, that I'm not sure yeah. about. So, yeah. Yeah. I have I have thought about a different like starting a new blog altogether sometimes for uh, one of our like main target audiences. It won't be for people who already know they want to start a podcast. It's to help people in a certain niche um, mm-hmm. that will ben- definitely benefit from a podcast. And therefore, yeah. So just using what we know to grow that. Yep. Such an investment yep. though, again. But but still, That's it's something. probably yeah. more reliable and more predictable than this other stuff I'm talking about. So yeah, you're, I think you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Colin, this is uh super fun, man. Thanks for, thanks for hopping on. Um, Alitu.com for folks who want to check out Alitu and, and if folks want to reach out and connect with you, where's the best place? I have been attempting to uh, build some social again on uh, LinkedIn this time, actually. So uh, I'm actually just calling Mick Gray on LinkedIn, calling MC Gray. Um, yeah. So that's probably the best place. Twitter too, to be fair. Same, same username, yeah. Colin Mick Gray. Awesome. Well, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's been great yeah, to be on. Always good to chat. Awesome.